This is the Isotope Spy. It's a portable recording studio with two combo jack inputs, built-in condenser microphone, and you can run it on a battery. My plan was to use it to record a song on the damn floor, but not everything went exactly as I thought it would. Well, hello there, Vlad here. Welcome to my studio. As you may or may not know, I went to NAMM 2020 and one of my ideas was to use this thing to record a song on the NAMM floor. I've had the Isotope Spire since like August-ish 2018 and I've used it a lot. I've used it to record band rehearsals, interviews. At my day job, I actually do a lot of 360 video. And most of the time, I'm not supposed to be in the shot. So when I've set up everything, I can just easily hide somewhere behind the corner and just remotely trigger this thing to start recording. Same goes for the 360 camera as well. And it's just been really, really practical for those situations. The point is I'm really familiar with this device. The song I decided to record is Wonderwall. Yes, Wonderwall. The song is pretty simple, I know it well, and that would allow me to focus more on the audio and video production instead of trying to remember the song itself. Nam is already a super stressful environment and adding more stress on top of that by choosing a really complicated song would just be stupid. I'll talk a little bit of what it was like to record with the Spire on the Nam floor and obviously we'll hear the mixed version, the unmixed version and some raw tracks as well from each of the instruments. I wanted to start tracking the song with the acoustic guitar just to lay down the basic structure of the song and then start adding instruments on top of that. So I headed to the LR Bags, is that how you pronounce it? I hope so. LR Bags booth. They had a nice selection of different kind of acoustic guitars there and they were kind enough to let me track the song with one of their guitars. Even though I know the song pretty well and I feel I can actually play it pretty well as well, I just had trouble tracking because I was really nervous about people knocking down my camera. I had a tripod and an iPhone on top of that and I felt a lot of the people kind of didn't respect that and would just walk into it sometimes hitting the tripod with their foot or something like that. That just kept me a bit nervous but I made it through. Because of this stressful environment I ended up going with just a good enough take instead of the perfect one if there is even such and moved on. Next I met up with my friend Eirik from Living Room Gear Demos and we decided to track drums using one of the electronic kits available there. I had only brought XLR cables with me and we spent way too much time trying to look for electronic drum set that actually had XLR outs because most of them have like this 6.3 millimeter plug thing, you know the instrument cable one. After spending way too much time trying to find the drum kits with XLR outs, we headed to the Roland booth. They were kind enough to borrow us a couple of instrument cables. We headed to one of the Roland electronic drum kits and I soon found out I could play drums. This was the first time that when I started to have a little bit of trouble with the Spire. When you are doing a multi-track recording with the Spire, the only way to control all of that is using the app and the app connects to your Spire using a Wi-Fi. This is something I should have learned from last year because last year I was using a wireless interview microphone system and because of thousands upon thousands of people there trying to use the Wi-Fi and having cell phones and such, that just trying to get any kind of connection there is nearly impossible. <laughs> Luckily, this issue could be overcome by just placing the phone on the Spire and it seemed to be able to maintain connection long enough so we got the drums done. I think those connectivity issues are kind of localized on the damn floor, weirdly enough, because when we headed to the Ashdown booth to track bass after the drum checking, I had almost no connection issues whatsoever. And when I headed to the Hughes and Kidney booth, which is a bit further away from the guitar, main guitar section, I had absolutely no connection issues. So at this point, you might ask why I'm tracking everything by going direct into the Spire instead of using the microphone over here, which is, by the way, really good on acoustic guitar, for example. And the answer is because Nam is so, so, so loud. It's just ridiculous how loud it is. Here's a few clips of like what my phone is picking up, even though it's like a meter, meter and a half away from where I was sitting. It like, yeah, just take a listen. Yeah. 
the last thing left to do was to track some vocals and at this point I had forgotten to eat and I was getting super tired. So for whatever reason, at that point I thought it was a good idea to sit down on the floor somewhere in the corner, watch people pass by, plug in my Lewitt interview microphone into the spire and just record some few very rough vocal takes. It's far from an ideal situation, but it's not like I was going for a perfect vocal take anyway. Sitting next to a steel wall seemed to amplify the connectivity issues and my phone not only had trouble connecting to the spire, but to any kind of network at all. I managed to get probably like three different vocal takes, but they came out pretty rough. I'm not like an amazing singer or anything like that, but I decided to use one of them anyway. So how does it all sound? You're about to hear a few different um, mixes. Basically, it's the isolated track per instrument, a rough mix I did on the Spy app itself and just exported that and then a full mix that I did by exporting all the tracks individually and mixing them over here. Spire allows you to add some real-time effects while you are recording, so some of the tracks might have some EQ, compression, reverbs and stuff like that applied to them already when I was recording. Today it's gonna be the day that I gotta throw it back to you By now you should somehow realize what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now I back me the words on the street that a fire in your heart is out I'd be the waters on the street that the fire in your heart is out I'm sure you heard it all before but you never really had a doubt I don't believe that everybody feels the way I do about you now Cause maybe You gotta be the one that saves me And after all You're my wonder So did this experience change my opinion about the Spire? The answer is yes and no. I don't think it's an optimal field recorder solution because there's no way to adjust the input gain on the device besides this sound check button over here, which is like an automatic input gain adjustment. Since I was shooting the videos with the phone that I also used to control the Spire, I kept running into situations where I would place the camera on the tripod, hit record and everything, and only then remember that I need to adjust the input gain on this thing. And sometimes that kind of caused some trouble to me. But at this point, I think it would be unfair for me not to mention the fact that the Spire isn't designed to do that. It's not a field recorder. I think it was only when I got home and started to go through the footage and audio files, I realized that as a multi-track recording device, at no point during that shoot or recording process, I had to actually kind of concentrate and try to figure out how to do something in the multi-track recording environment. And yeah, it just worked pretty much seamlessly. And I'm mentioning this because this wasn't the case when the Spire was released. When I got my Spire, you couldn't, for example, cut out a part in the middle of the song. You could only like do one cut and then delete everything before or after that cut, and that was it. That Those were the only editing options you had. Isotop has been really active updating this device. They've added new features and obviously fixed a bunch of the issues. And as I already mentioned, as a multi-track recorder, 
I have no trouble with it at all. It's really fun and simple to use to do multi-track demos or like little recordings as this one. And I don't consider the Wi-Fi thing a real issue, to be honest, because I think NAM is probably like one of the most extreme situations anyone will ever use this thing at. So there you have it. That was my experience of recording a song at the NAM floor with the Isotop Spire. And at this point, I kind of want to hear what's your most extreme recording experience. Let me know in the comment section down below. And I think I was again reminded how much fun this device can be when it's being used to do the things it's designed to do, meant to do, something like that. I think you get the idea, even if that's not like, you know, like a Grammarly perfect sentence. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out Eric's channel. I'll put a link below in the description. Living Room Gear Demos. You might know him already. If you don't, you're in for a probably pleasant surprise. I don't know where I'm going with that one. Yeah, like, share, subscribe, YouTube things, support me, merch, jam tracks, links below, do that as well. Thanks for watching this video. I shall see you next time.